Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking all about the 1946 Wheat Penny, and we're going to be going over everything that you'd want to know about it, whether it's the rare ones in the form of a mint error, conditional rarity, or a variety where I look really close at the coin in order to see if there's like a special characteristic to the coin um, or something else. I'll just be explaining the general history and then all the things that really are gonna make the ones that are special special and then talk about their value. So let's get right into the presentation. So here we've got the 1946 Wheat Penny, and I'll just start with a brief overview. You can pause it to read a little bit more, but these were the first coins that featured a person on them for U.S. circulating coinage, Abraham Lincoln. It was the 100th anniversary of his birth date. That's why they switched it on the 150th. They switched it to the Lincoln Memorial on the reverse reverse which came after it um, for the coins that are just valuable because they're in really nice shape it's going to take a super super gorgeous and all of these values are for red um, you know and a, a nice uncirculated 46 might be worth a dollar if it's ungraded and you know in say mint state 63 or 64 condition but the real value where you should grade them is if you think it's mint state 66 with a chance or good chance of being mint state 67 just because the grading costs are relatively high and it's pretty challenging to find a mint state 66. The more interesting things to look for in my opinion are going to be these varieties where if you look closely you're going to need for these a magnifying glass um, probably like 10x or like a jeweler's loop, a coin loop, a 10x, 20x, something like that. Some people hunt on computers, uh, like computer uh, microscope, USB microscopes. Um, but you can see the separation lines in the four and the six. Um, and when I say mint state 65, this would be probably for more of an ungraded find. Like when you have, you know, it's not like worth less than the uh, graded mint state 65 at PCGS. This is like a, a raw coin if you can find it in these conditions. So it's a nice premium. Mint state 63, yeah, probably jumps from like uh, 50 cents or a dollar to $10. And there's a little more desirability. Uh, this could be graded at ANAX. Um, though it's not necessarily always worth it unless it's in really nice condition. The second double die obverse uh, is a strong loop under the nine. There's a tiny separation lines on the four and, and one, but I think the best place to look for it is on the nine. It's also going to have this doubled eyelid, which is a sort of traditional class four doubling. Um, there's also going to be this one with some nice bars, especially notching in the G and the O. Um, looks like sort of extra thickness on the date, um, but this is one of the other interesting ones to look for that's a little less known i think the clear separation though is nice um, and attractive then we have here a another example just always on a lot of these wheat pennies there's a propensity to have these doubled eyelids they're not super super valuable but it's definitely a doubling and it's one that you can find um, on the reverse you can look for sort of a tilted uh doubling you can see up here sort of a a little bit of like a shifted spread uh, separation in the uh, R, the I, the U. Um, so all throughout, the valuations, again, are not crazy, but it's just sort of interesting to know about them, be on the lookout for them. This is the better known double die reverse. There's also an extra thickness one um, where it's just simply like the lettering on the back, uh, especially in the E pluribus, you know, way thicker in the L and the U um, sort of in that lettering. So then we get to some of the errors. This would be repeatable when the coins get struck a bunch. Um, sometimes the dies are used to strike them start falling apart uh, and that results in die cracks and then die breaks like this. So presumably there's a lot more of these that were produced. This one was worn obviously it's an au condition but it's seen time in change and then somebody picked it out because of that die break sold for 40 bucks that's more attainable than something like this which was struck on a silver dime planchet i just show it more as an interest piece um it's really cool if you have silver pennies it's most likely that somebody just colored it but this is a planchet it's slightly small you can tell by the in god we trust being cut off and there's like some stretched lettering and yeah sold for a lot more than the more tame errors sell for um, there's also this elliptical clip which wasn't noticed right away um, but was cut on both sides uh, that's one of the more interesting types of clip planchets so it wasn't during the strike that this error happened but instead in the formation of the sort of blanks that would then get formed into planchets and struck um, so when it's getting cut out of the metal sheet this happened um, there's also this coin which was struck 30 percent off center simply it didn't fall properly in the striking chamber and received a strike on 30 percent or 70 percent um, of the Planchet, this sold for $780. It's pretty attractive to be in this nice shape with very little in the way of hits. So it graded mid-state 65. 
and people pay up for them, especially on wheat cents like this when the date's showing. So that's what we've got for today. A lot of interesting varieties to look for, as well as some strong presence on the errors and then possibly some upside. But uh, I'd say, you know, it makes for a fun hunt to look for things on the pennies. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every U.S coin, date, mint mark, denomination on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date uh, mint mark denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll, yeah, have fun seeing you there.